Germanic Germanics Polizzi, a great believer in and champion of British services, products and design. And I'm here in New York helping to promote five brilliant UK companies who we think have what it takes to crack the American market. Let's get this on. But they're not going it alone. They're being assisted in their corporate quest by the UK's Department for Business and Trade, DBT, using its global experience and New York presence to give our five businesses the best of chances. My goal as Trade Commissioner is continuing to develop our expertise about the US market so we can match people, match companies, and really help to inspire more business flow. But how will this work? First, they'll need to gain that crucial local insight. We'll set them up with an expert in their target market. Just imagine yourself 10 years from now, you'll be doing a version of this with Goldman Sachs as they fund your IPO. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> this is why we love Americans, right? <laughs> then it's time for our UK businesses to step up. Yeah, I did. As they're paired to pitch with some of America's biggest buyers. We manage about 66 million square feet of real estate in New York. I'll see the other side. Thank you. The key to success in America for any British company is preparation because this is a vast country and you can spend a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of money in getting things wrong. And hopefully they'll seal that all-important international deal and unleash the power of British business by making it big in America. Irene and Philip McAleese, husband and wife entrepreneurs, are the creators of C-Sense, an intelligent bike light that not only illuminates the roads, but also provides insight into a cyclist's environment through the collection of anonymized data. This data allows C-Sense to pinpoint exactly how cities can improve road safety across their cycling routes. C-Sense began really as a personal quest for me to get better visibility and safety on the road for my commute. And then we realized that so many more people wanted the same thing and that we'd a wonderful business opportunity. C-Sense run production wholly out of their base in Northern Ireland and have already enjoyed success in the UK and Europe. But their big goal is to crack the American market. So, DBT has arranged for them to come out to the Big Apple and pitch to Zumo, a leading global manufacturer of electric bikes. Good to meet you, Sia. I've arranged to meet CSEN's directors, Philip and Irene, here in the village to talk all things cycling. And I'm very glad to see that they've already begun biking around the city like native New Yorkers, helmets and all. Safety first. Hello, my dears. How are you? Good to see you. There's been such an explosion of cycling in cities all over the world. Do you think now that there's a massive sea change in attitudes in American cities? There are a number of reasons or drivers for why cities want to make that transition to more cycling and more walking. But it's, it's really about how do you allocate space in the city that's going yes. to allow um, all these different modes to coexist. And if you want to make that transition rapidly, that's where data comes into the picture. And what are you hoping from this trip, this New York trip? So we've already seen a small sample of what New York has already done in putting in new bike lanes and pedestrializing Times Square and so much more. And we're really looking at how our data can be used to help them accelerate um, and feed into some of the really important goals around Vision Zero um, and improving infrastructure and transportation for everyone. First implemented in Sweden in the 1990s, Vision Zero is a strategy to eliminate traffic fatalities and increase safe travel for all. But how can C-Sense use its data to help deliver this? So how C-Sense works is it actually uses sensors inside the light and the light monitors the environment 800 times per second using edge processing and AI to sort of crunch and analyse all that data in real time so it will react if you're at a, a dangerous situation like a roundabout, road junction, filtering in traffic, approaching car headlights. The light's going to come on and flash brighter and faster. It actually is a high quality, really innovative bike light that is 
helping make you more visible and helping to draw attention to you on the road. But it wasn't until we um, started to look at the data that came off the light that we realised, hey, we could use this data to inform how we design our cities to make it safer for cyclists. So I mean, it's super interesting when we look at the different experiences in each of those three first bridges across the Thames. What we wanted to do was to look at all the areas of swerving and braking so that we can then start to predict where cycling collisions are going to happen. We do pretty much everything in-house. We have marketing, design, data, analytics. Um, then we have your tech software and hardware, engineering, mobile app design. So I lead on the manufacturing side of things. As Irene says, she, she leads on the data and business development side of things. Yeah, I don't go to the factory. <laughs> <laughs> We're incredibly proud of being able to manufacture locally. Um, it offers a huge number of advantages. It gives us the opportunity to come down here and work with the factory to get really good yield, really fast production, and to iron out some of those things that are really difficult to do uh, in overseas uh, factories. So we stand for really getting more people on bikes, improving our cities, reducing pollution, reducing congestion, making people healthier and happier. And so we want to help cities in their quest to get more people on bikes. That's great. Thank you again, George. Really appreciate it. Well, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> and a city that could definitely use C-Sense's insights is New York, which is why DBT think it would be the perfect fit for the city that never sleeps. In the UK, we have a thriving tech sector, uh, currently valued at over one trillion pounds, making it only the third market in the world to have a tech sector of that value. What we're trying to do as the Department for Business and Trade is to really shine a spotlight on all of that technology and innovation that exists in the UK and make sure that we're bringing some of those innovations to the US so consumers here can benefit from them as well as in the UK. So I think the dream outcome would be to really engage with New York to help them transform. We think we've got the ability to really give them much deeper insights than they already had. Wouldn't it be fantastic to see how those bike lanes perform, where they're optimal, and help the city improve them where they're not? It seems so aligned. It's now time to take it to New York. Let's make it big. Well, New York is most definitely big, and hopefully Philip and Irene have what it takes to make it here. Later, they'll be pitching to Zumo, who don't currently have the special technology that C-Sense offers to analyze data. But who are Zumo and what do they do? Zumo is a subscription-based e-bike rental service. Engineered in Australia and operating across the world, it is renowned for its bike's durability and performance. Zumo is an ideal business partner for C-Sense, and taking the first initial steps to a partnership would be fantastic progress for C-Sense's US market ambitions. But before the big pitch to Zumo, DBT has arranged for Irene and Philip to meet with a fellow UK company to get some inside tips, Brompton Bicycles. Brompton is the UK's biggest bicycle manufacturer and its innovative folding bikes are perfect for the cramped and busy lifestyle of New York City. Brompton has been seeing exceptional growth in the US ever since it launched there. So, who better to coach Philip and Irene on how to pitch the American market? Juliet Scott Croxford is the president of Brompton for North America. You know, as a UK company coming to the US, yeah. um, how do we adapt and tailor what we do to the specific audience of the US? Yeah, it's such a large market and every state and every city is so different. I would liken it to Europe as opposed to the UK and every, every state and city has different laws and regulation and the way that we market to consumers and the community in New York. It's very different to how you would speak to someone in LA. In New York, you are very focused on getting from A to B and the compactness and the convenience and the right. fact that you can fold it up and go Take up in up. the elevator yes. or in the stairs. Yes. Okay. In LA, you know, you're not going to stop people from driving their car. They love their car, but they would put the Brompton in their trunk and they would right. drive, park and ride. Mm. They live by the beach. They want to yeah. pick up the bike path it's a leisure activity at the weekend. 
But it's quite interesting because they have a very strong, they've got the three strands of the business, which is the B2B and the B2C and the B2G. And I think that that's quite yeah. unusual. You know, it's a, it's a really nice spread. It, it is. And I think it's necessary, particularly as you start to get to know the US market, because they all influence, they all talk to each other. And I think if you can cultivate and engage all of those different stakeholders groups, that's exactly the way you should do it. And that's really, really encouraging to hear that perspective, actually. Boosted by their DBT arranged meeting with Juliet, now Irene and Philip have to get their heads in the game as they travel uptown to the Garment District for the main event. They're pitched to Zumo at their New York headquarters. Can they make the lasting connection with Zumo they need during the meeting? Luckily, there's just enough time for me to squeeze in some last-minute pieces of advice. A bit of flattery never does any harm, so I'd quite like that as an opening pitch, by the way. Okay. You know, that you know that they're all... They have quality bikes. And that yes. they're improving the life for delivery, cyclists. Right. And I think it's okay. nice to show that you're appreciative of what they're and that you've done your, you know, you've done your work. And, yeah and finding out what it is that differentiates them from, from mm -hmm. other people in mm -hmm. their field. I think if we can see alignment and them give an indication of how we can add value to what they offer, and if we walk away with that added understanding, I think that would be a really good first step in the relationship. You know, you've got a really nice positive energy. I think it's mm -hmm. let that let that wave carry you. Okay, through. thank you. So we're excited. And I'm excited for you. With last words of encouragement over, it's time for Philip and Irene to meet with Zumo to try and get their smart lights onto Zumo's fleet of electric bikes. Philip and Irene are pitching to North America's general manager, Dustin Kearns. Me too. Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Dustin, good to see you. <laughs> and I'll be watching every move on my monitor downstairs. Come on, Philip and Irene. Thank you so much for um, inviting us in today. Thanks for being here. Really happy to have you. Yeah. Yeah. As we walked in, we saw uh, one of your uh, staff giving a demonstration to a customer around how to turn on the lights, how to stay safe and that sort of stuff as well. Sure. Um, obviously, great to see that safety is, a, is one of the things that you focus on a lot. Yeah, as you, as you all are, are aware from walking around, New York definitely one of the presents a lot of challenges for riders. So our uh, Zumo Zero is kind of our, our bike that was purpose-built for delivery, safety mm -hmm. at the core. So for us, safety is, is really everything. From, yeah. um, One of the things that we do um, is obviously implement a, a deeper level of sensing, really through our AI technology, which profiles the rider and the environment around them. You can understand at an individual level how that rider is behaving, whether they're behaving in a, a harmonious way that you would mm -hmm. support, or perhaps in a way that would benefit for some training or you know, some, some perhaps yeah. corrective advice. Um, I guess have you thought of any of those things or are they, do they present pain points or challenges that you would want to get uh, some better data and some better insights on? Yeah, I think specifically one of the, one of the things that's important for us is on our, the enterprise side of the business where a company will have a fleet of bikes that they're effectively leasing and, and main, we're maintaining and um, they keep those on site. They want to know how safe are those riders being because once they leave, you don't really have uh, a lot of a lot of view over how they're riding and what's happening, but making sure that you have a view on how safe they're riding, that can come back and then you, know, you can get a rider safety score and then figure out what are the what are the ways that we can improve our operations. And so how do you how do you measure that safety score at the moment? Yeah, so today we don't have that safety score that's built in. Yeah. Well, that could be something we could help you with. <laughs> <laughs> She's so charming, Irene. I really like her. We're using these sort of uh, very granular data insights. This will, um, goes beyond, I guess, yeah, the, the general GPS tracking. We can really get into the swerving patterns, the braking patterns, and even the kind of road surfaces that mm -hmm. they're travelling over, which I think you correctly kind of said could be used for training or to better understand um, how to target interventions. At the core of it, our technology is um, patented sensor technology. So we were, uh, we've been using AI for about the last 10 years before it became sort of really cool in the last six sure. months. So it can run either in our sensors, which we can fit onto your bikes, um, or potentially we can, um, we can integrate it into your existing IoT modules. We run our algorithms 
um, using your sensors on bike. Yeah. yeah, we'd love to love to keep the conversation going on that. Yeah. Absolutely. It's really interesting how they divide their pitch and how fluent they are with each other and how they hand over to each other, how they never talk over each other. I mean, it's very practiced and very fluent, really admirable. And I think understanding kind of how those things could integrate into our existing tech, that's a really interesting thing for yeah. me to understand more of. And mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. The next steps then, we'll, uh, I guess we'll send you some more information about our rider scoring and how that works and what sort of benefits that would uh, potentially bring to you. Yeah, um, I'm going to explore that a bit more and, and see what next steps might look like after that. Sounds great. Perfect. Cool. Cool. Building relationships in this way really is a long-term process. It doesn't happen overnight. Thanks, Thanks for coming awesome. in. Appreciate it. Making this trip all the way over just to come and see us. Yep. Like, incredible, you know? Yeah. It's like, really great. <laughs> <It's> special. <laughs> <laughs> Super. I think they did a fantastic job and took great strides forward in establishing a relationship with Zumo. But do they? I think he seemed genuinely interested. So I feel quite positive coming out of this meeting, actually. Good. That there is like a good opportunity for follow on. You know, the team at um, DBT have been amazing as well in terms of helping us prepare and line up all these meetings. Um, we wouldn't have really been able to reach out to Zumo on our own or Brompton. So that has been fantastic. I mean, you were brilliant. Both of you, I can't mm. congratulate you enough. It's always super important yeah. to find that that need, that problem that we can really solve. We can say the pain like, point. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's the end we need to secure that initial uh, relationship mm. with them, to explore, to co-create, um, and to go bigger from there. Good. Yeah. Uh, it's really nice that you're so appreciative, and um, it's been really fun working with you today. Cheers to that. Cheers. Cheers, <laughs> darling. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you.